UCLA is a university with unlimited possibilities for students that desire world-class academics and research. Unmatched diversity, incredible cultural and social opportunities, successful alumni and career networking, first-class campus facilities, plus America's top intercollegiate sports teams. Located in Westwood, just a few miles from the Pacific Ocean, UCLA's one square mile campus is surrounded by famous cities such as Bel Air, Beverly Hills, Brentwood, and Santa Monica. Welcome to UCLA Bruin Talk. I'm Ralph Irvin along with Javrina Safari. Coming up, we're going to look at men's tennis and then talk a little bit of UCLA football. UCLA has some exciting events. Let's take a look. Julian Arnold is a freshman member of the UCLA men's tennis team. He comes from San Luis Obispo, California. He also has the nickname of Chicken. I'm sure we'll learn about that coming up. And Grant Chen, well, he has been a graduate of UCLA back in 1996, member of the tennis program, and currently serves as their director of operations for both the men's and women's teams. Guys, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks. Let's get started. Practice started with the start of the school year, so a couple weeks ago, but play's already getting started this week with some of the players. What's the outlook for the team this year? It's very exciting. I mean, we lost uh, two great seniors last year, Michael Look and Harrell Shrugo, but got a couple great freshmen, Julian being one of them, and a great transfer student from uh, Cal Berkeley. So very excited for the season. I think we're going to have a, a deep team on the men's side and the women's side, and this should be a lot of fun. And Julian, I imagine that you're really excited to be out there and playing and learning all about college, what the college tennis life's all about. Yeah, I'm really excited for the upcoming season. Uh, just coming to UCLA, I felt like a, there's a strong sense of uh, like we can win a championship almost every year. So um, I'm excited for the new season and the school year. So. Julian, you actually have the nickname of Chicken. How Can you tell us a little bit about that story, how you got that nickname? Um, well, back in sixth grade, uh, I moved to a new school and the kids thought I ran on my toes because I ran the mile pretty fast. Um, so they called me chicken. And it kind of stuck through junior high. And in junior high, I actually started sticking my thumbs underneath my backpack because uh, the weight kind of put a lot of stress on my back. So it stuck through high school, and now I still have it, I guess. Yeah, say, now it's stuck into college. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> we were one of three freshmen on the team this year. How has it been coming in, practicing with guys who are much older, that have experience at a totally different level than you've experienced? Um, it's, it's definitely a new experience. Um, I've never really practiced with guys that are this good. Um, back in my hometown, I have Cal Poly, so I've gone out and hit with them a little bit. So I'm used to hanging around older guys, but no one at this level. And uh, it's great to have that type of practice every day where I can improve so much and uh, hopefully just improve my game as much as possible before season starts. And have they already started uh, just you know bringing you into into the fold, so to speak, and getting you acclimated with how things are like on campus? Yeah, definitely. Um, I've uh, learned learned how to live on campus so far, and um, the guys have been a great help. So that's good. Are there any teammates that are you're looking forward to be playing with this season? Um, I don't know. I've been, I really like all the guys on the team. There's, I don't really have personal preference towards any of them. I mean, some of them I've known longer than others, but I mean, I really don't know if I'll even be playing.
playing or who I'll be playing with or where I will be in the lineup because season's so far off. So. Grant, as we mentioned, uh, play's already beginning in the invitational events. How do playing in the invitational events for those players, how does that help the team as the uh, season goes on? The fall is all about individual tournaments, singles, doubles, representing UCLA, but playing for yourself and uh, helps getting matched tough, you know, kind of get a little exposure to some of the other schools, see what the other teams are like, some of their, their new freshmen, their new players, and just really getting a lot of matches under their belt. And I would imagine that those guys then bring experience for the young players who haven't been able to be out there and if nothing else get information but also pass on some of the tournament experience. Absolutely, absolutely. This week is a big event out uh, hosted by Tulsa and we sent a couple of the older better players and maybe who have been here a few years and have a national ranking and the next couple of weeks we have a few tournaments in the LA area which uh, all our team will participate in trying to see where they're at, gauge where they're at and how our team are comparing with the others. And Julian, I would imagine that it provides you a great new opportunity to kind of tap into the brains of some of these guys that have been out there playing so far in the year. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these guys have a lot of knowledge to share. And, um, you know, it's just a great resource to ask them questions, you know, see how I'm hitting the ball, if there's anything else I can work on that they notice that I just can't see myself. So, I mean, it's good to have a knowledgeable group of guys out there. Grant, as a director of operations, what are some of your duties and responsibilities? Every day is a different day, but I help uh, both the men's team and the women's team with all sorts of things from Adidas and logistics and travel to uh, some of the day-to-day -day operations and logistics, PA announcement at home games, all sorts of different things. And you work with the men's and women's teams. How are they similar and then how are they different? You know, both teams are a small, intimate group, you know, 10, 12 players, two, three coaches per team. and. It's really a nice little family between all of us. You know, our locker rooms are very close. The women's and men's offices are close. Our team rooms are close. We share the same practice courts. So it's a really small little group that I think uh, benefits both the men's and women's team having that common bond. And I would imagine that that's probably something of a new experience for you, Julian, is coming into a new environment, one playing with the quality that you mentioned, but also that there are women there that are also just as high quality of players. Yeah, um, you know, the women's team is very good also, and uh, it's definitely a new experience for me, uh, getting to know them and becoming friends with them as well. Um, but I don't know, also back home, I, my personal coach was the Cal Poly women's coach, so I've done a lot of practice with uh, their girls' team, so um, okay. I've had a little bit of experience with the women, I guess. <laughs> Grant, um, Julian, how has the transition from college life been so far? Um, it's been a big change. Uh, living on your own, you know, not having my mom make my bed anymore, <laughs> um, or bring me food, I guess. You know, the, I don't know, the meals or the scheduled times, which is kind of conflicting for me sometimes. Sometimes I go through a day only eating one meal, so I still got to get used to it, I guess. Now, UCLA has a distinguished tennis legacy. I mean, great history, first national title was won in tennis. Is that exciting for you to come in and join that tradition? Very exciting. I mean, this is a, this is a school that competes for a national championship every year, and um, that's what I want to feel like we're doing every year. You know, being a strong team, always ranked in the top five, and uh, competing hard each year. So. I'd imagine that was a selling point for you in deciding to come to UCLA. Um, I mean, it was one of the selling points, but that's not the main reason I came here. Um, I came mainly because of the guys on the team that I really got along with, and uh, the coaches and I really liked how they ran their practices and they work hard every day so I wanted to be part of a team that was you know really motivated. And Grant I would imagine that again that tradition is something that is always there that you have to live up to I mean granted working with uh, Billy Martin there's the tradition is there right there with him. Absolutely it's truly a, a humbling thing every day to go to work and you know go through Morgan Center and be at the tennis center and you know you're surrounded by these incredible coaches past great players uh, Coach Bassett and all the former great tennis players. It's just truly a humbling experience every single day. Grant, what kind of changes are the fans going to expect this year? I think it's going to be a fun year. You know, we've got a great group. They're all working really hard. Uh, I think competing for a Pac-10 title uh, and a national championship title. So I think those things on that end, um, the conference is extremely strong. Stanford, SC, Cal, you know, got some great Pac-10 matches. 
as well as non-conference matches. So we're looking for some great matches at LATC this season. I, I would imagine that playing in the Pac-10 is like playing in the NCAAs all season long because really when it comes down to it, half the NCAA field tends to be the Pac-10 when it matters. Absolutely, and I think it's great preparation. You know, we've seen some of these, uh, some of these teams compete against them three, four times in a year or within a month. You know, we could play them during the season at national indoors, at the national championships. And so we get very familiar with them. You know, it's a mutual respect between some of these schools, and we go out there and battle. Is that something that you've experienced in the past, Julian, of being really familiar with an opponent so that you know what their strengths and weaknesses are long before you've entered the match? Um, yeah, I mean, going down south to play junior tournaments, you always tend to see the same guys at the end of the tournament, the same couple of few that are just, man, I really don't want to play this guy, he's going to be a tough match, or, you know, it's another grueling three-set one or something like that, but, I mean, that's what you come to expect from the Pac-10, uh, they're really strong in tennis, and uh, I've known that my whole life, and that's been a, that's almost been a, just a dream for me to come and play with the Pac-10. Well, and I imagine that on a, on a big, bigger picture that you, you'd look at a circumstance of a certain player that you'd be matched up against and you're like, that's a guy that maybe everything says that he's better than I am, but I always play well. That's a guy I love playing against. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely those guys that, are, that just match up with you really nicely, even if they are higher ranked or they beat people that you just get your butt kicked by. So, I mean, that happens sometimes, I guess. I, w I would imagine that you know when, when if one of those guys comes up from another school, you go up to the coach, knock on the door, coach. I'm really good against this guy. Yeah. Just put, put me in. Put me in. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Hopefully, I mean, I mean, I know a couple guys from SC that I would like to take a couple cracks at. So that'd be nice to get in the lineup. Now, when you look ahead to this year, are you looking at singles or doubles play? Um, I really don't know. I mean, season's so far off, and. Um, you know, everybody, everybody's competing really closely for those spots, and you know, whoever, whoever is playing the best at the time, that's who coach is going to put in. So, you know, hopefully it's me, but wherever he decides to put me, I'm more than happy to step in and do my part. Do you have doubles experience? Um, I've played quite a bit of doubles uh, throughout the juniors. Um, I've really focused on honing my net game, uh, which many juniors don't focus on. So I feel like that's a big asset that I have over many of the top players that are coming to the Pac-10. And Julian, do you have any career goals thus far? Um, I don't know. I'm still kind of young, so I haven't really thought about it. But um, for tennis, at least, I'd, I'd like to make it into the traveling team this year. That would be a good goal. And then um, hopefully by my senior year, becoming an All-American would be amazing. So that would be the ultimate goal, I guess. And I would guess, Grant, that with all the international players that are on this roster, mm -hmm. it makes it a very interesting circumstance for you as operations manager in, in, in just being able to coordinate with all of them. Absolutely. You know, tennis has uh, traditionally been a very individual sport, and everyone's got their idiosyncrasies, and they're, they're, they're all creatures that have it, and uh, like things done a certain way to prepare best for their event. And so kind of juggling 10, 12 guys doing that exact thing thing is, uh, is can be a challenge sometimes. All right, well, Julian Grant, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having thank us. Thank you so much. And again, we want to thank uh, Julian and Grant for joining us here on UCLA Bruin Talk. Coming up, Javrita's going to step aside, and I'll be joined by Stephanie Wetmore as we take a look at UCLA football with safety Raheem Moore. It's all coming up right here on UCLA Bruin Talk. After these public service announcements. A trophy can be made just about anywhere. But there's one place where champions are made. UCLA, champions meet here. Welcome back to UCLA Bruin Talk. Coming up, Stephanie and I are going to talk football with UCLA safety Raheem Moore. But first, it's the Athlete of the Week. This week we honor Scott Davidson of UCLA Men's Water Polo as our Athlete of the Week. A redshirt senior from Seal Beach, California, Scott has truly stepped up to lead his fellow Bruins. In recent battles against Santa Clara and UC Irvine, Scott scored two goals each.
to contribute to the finals of 11-5 and 10-4 wins. Davidson is known for his high scoring average. He's also been known to put in goals in the clutch, scoring in the final seconds of the match, as he did in a recent tournament where the Bruins toppled then number one USC. Scott also scored the first ever goal in the new Speaker Aquatic Center. Congratulations, Scott, and good luck to the rest of the team. If you would like additional information about UCLA Athletics, please call our fan phone line at 310-825-8575 or visit our website at www.uclabruins.com. Raheem Moore is a sophomore free safety for the UCLA Bruins. He came into UCLA from Dorsey High School here in Los Angeles, and he started every game his freshman year and here in his sophomore year as well. Raheem, thanks for joining us. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you. The day that you decided to become a Bruin, was it a day that you were expecting to commit to UCLA, or was it just getting caught in the emotions because you weren't the only guy in football that decided to uh, go the UCLA way? Mm. I guess you could say I was caught in emotions. Um, a friend of mine, Aaron Hess, I've been knowing for a while, a long time, my whole life. He called me before, uh, right when he committed. He said, Raheem, man, come join this, man, the Bruins. I said, you know, that sounds kind of good. So when well, me and uh, Jonathan Franklin came up to UCLA one day and um, they had us all in a room, it was kind of like the hot seat, you know. <laughs> and, you know, me, me and him uh, talked to each other. We said, you know what, uh, let's do this, man. We, we've been with each other for a long time at Dorsey. And um, I told Jesse, I said, man, I want to finish my career with you in college, you know. and uh, it, hopefully we, we'll be blessed to see each other in, in the big leagues. But I said, let's do this, Jesky. You know, this could be a good decision for our life and the future. And uh, we went in there and just handled business and then just committed. And, I mean, you talk about that day. A lot of guys that make up the starters for UCLA now committed that day. Now they're either redshirt freshmen or sophomores. Mm -hmm. Amazing that that day, I mean, that changed the course of things for UCLA football. Oh, it did. And, uh, you know, when all that happened, it, it was it was like a vision that was already put out there. I guess it was from God because we knew like when we all came together, our camaraderie and, and our and our passion and our and our friendship just clicked so fast. And that time we was on our trip, we all would just we we, we went well together. And uh, you know uh, throughout that process of recruiting, I said, man, you know what? I don't want to spend my my time with no one else but these guys. And I just felt like this is the right place for me. And I'm quite sure a lot of guys felt the same way. And as as it comes, hey, we all here together, and we're gonna make the best time of it. You're on your second year. How, how do you feel about the team this year? Oh, I have a, I have, I have a lot of confidence in us. You know, um, Coach Lynn, as he has done something towards us that we have never seen before, as far as installing toughness in us and and uh, working hard every day. And um, throughout the offseason, we went through and people doubting us and everything. We took it into consideration. You know, we ran hard this offseason. We lifted weights so much and waking up 5:30 in the morning, getting a lot of extra. So. You know, but uh, this second year has been, it's, 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 it's been tough, but it's been good for us. And, um, hey, uh, we're going to go out there and just continue the season and try to do the best we can to win and get to a bowl game. What are some major changes from last year? Is it the conditioning that's going to make the big impact? Yeah, the conditioning and also our mentality, I can say. You know, uh, our guys are so hungry. It's like we never ate before, you know. Throughout that off season, you know, we went through so much, you know, not winning the game and also just sitting home on Christmas break looking at guys playing that we know we, we, we could have been able to, to be there and playing in that bowl game. And it was also, it was like a wake up call for us. And, uh, you know, by coming out this year and, you know, playing against San Diego State, it's like, you know, we have so much to just put it on the line. And I think each and every week we're going to do that. And um, I think uh, I, I told the fellas, I said, you know, we need to go out there and give our fans what they need to see. And that's what we're going to do each and every week. And you've got a new defensive coordinator this year in, uh, in yeah. Coach Bulla. Yeah. How's it been uh, transitioning? And, I mean, obviously you've been working with him all the way back to the springtime, mm -hmm. so it's not like it's new at this point, but yet he's new for this season. Right. You know, Bulla, he's a – that's one intense guy right there. You know, Bulla is like the pops of the defense. You know, whatever he says goes. And, you know, one thing about him, when we come in our meetings, there's so much, there's so much going on and everybody's focused. And it's like, you know, all Coach Bullo wants us to do is go out there and just fly around and hit and play fast. And, you know, you have to give it to him, you know. And, um, he, you know, he preaches toughness, and he wants us to be relentless and be disciplined out there. You know, he's a great coach, and uh, he's one of the most intense coaches I ever had, you know, along with my coach from Dorsey. And, uh, you know, Bullo just want great things that come, come out of us. And, you know, he, he tells us every day, you know, get better, you know. And uh, every day, come ready to play. It don't matter if it's full pads or wearing shells or wearing just helmets. Just come ready to play, and everybody just be disciplined and just work hard. And, uh, you know, when he tells us that, he kind of gets us pumped up. You know, he's, he's an emotional guy like me and a lot of other players on the team. So he, he gets us revved up, and I like that about him. Well, you talk about being an emotional player. Here it is, your sophomore. 
and yeah. yet you're one of the leaders on the defense because you played so many games starting all of last year. <clears throat> How has it been after last year a disappointing season having to wait? that whole off season and train and train and train to get ready to start the, the 2009 season? Um, you know, it's, it's tough, man. You know, uh, just, just going through that whole off season, there was so much going on to where, you know, personally in my heart, I was enraged to where I just didn't care about anybody else but Bruins. And, you know, I, I put in so much work to where it was time I was passing out, throwing up and getting up five o'clock in the morning, you know, not eating no breakfast, just going out there straight, just go work out and go hit some sand dooms and go run heels and get extra stuff in just to contribute for the team. And I knew, I said, knowing that I'm the last line of defense and I'm a free safety and how many free safeties that came out of UCLA, I said, I have to do, make sure I do my part. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing about sports and a, and a team effort. If everybody do their job, you know, nothing can go wrong. And, you know, um, that offseason was so hard to where it's like, you know, er I bet everybody was emotional. And, you know, the first game at San Diego State, I went up to Terrence Austin, I went up to Reggie Carter, I said, you know what, I'm going to do all I can to send you out on a good note. And I told him, God, I said, man, you can count on me. And I told him I love him with all my heart. And that's why every, every week I go out there and each, day, each and every day of practice, I dedicate my practices and my games to these seniors because they went through so much scrutiny throughout their whole career. And they deserve a Rose Bowl. They, they deserve a Cotton Bowl, Tostitos Bowl. So, you know, and a lot of other guys like Vern and, and Bosworth brothers. So. You know, that offseason was really good for me and also good for everybody else, not knowing that, you know, we lost a lot of games, but it was a wake-up call to know that, mm -hmm. you know, college football is really what people think, and it's tough. So, you know, it was good for us, and, hey, you know, hey, the, time, the past is the past, and, hey, now we're moving on. We're just trying to win every game as many as we can. Clearly your hard work's been noticed because new, Coach Neuheisel says you're going to be one of the key factors to success this year. How does that feel when you hear that from your head coach? Oh, it's a blessing. You know, it's a blessing. Uh, you know, that's, that's what I, I want the type of role. You know, I want people to say, you know, we can count on Raheem more. And uh, each and every day I go out there working hard. And I know that, you know, the pressure that is on me, I kind of welcome it to me because, like, it kind of makes me stay on my P's and Q's and it, it makes me stay humble. And it also just lets me know, like, okay, Raheem, you got to take care of business because, you know, you are a free safety. You know, you, you're babysitting all 10 other guys. So when Nuazo <laughs> tells me that, I'm, I'm happy. And I told Nuazo, I tell him all the time, I said, Coach, and we believe and we have, and we have confidence, I think we can shock a lot of people. And you know, Nuhaz is a fantastic coach, and he gets me revved up before the games, and he gets all of us revved up. You know, his, his, his pregame speeches are the best. And, you know, he, he preaches toughness too, and he, and he preaches goodness. So, you know, big ups to Coach Nuhaz, and then, um, we're going to do all I can, we're going to do all we can to make him look good, because he deserves it. Well, and again, you get that passion. It doesn't hurt that you've got a guy who wore the colors. Who, right. who's been in that locker, right. who's been on that practice field, everything else, mm -hmm. you kind of feel it because when, when you guys are hurting, he's hurting too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, you know, one thing about football, it's like, hey, we all go down as one. You know, there's no eye in the tank. And, uh, you know, when we do bad, Coach Newhouse does bad. You know, when, he does, when, when we do good, he looks good. So that's one thing about uh, this effort and also just, it's just teamwork. Teamwork is not only just with the players, it's with the coaching staff too. So if we do our part, the coach is going to do that part. Now. You came to UCLA, again, second year here. Mm -hmm. Can you think about how much things have changed in just moving short distance from Dorsey High School here to Westwood? Yeah. How different is the world for you? Oh, it's a lot different. You know, now I'm in the public eye more. And, you know, also I have to watch what I do. You know, I can't do certain things that other people can do, that, 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 that other people can do as far as, you know, go out and party and do other things like that. You know, I have to kind of watch where I am. And, I, and also I'm labeled. You know, I'll be wearing this hoodie. People's going to look at me and say, okay, that's Raheem Moore. You know, they know that, okay, he's a Christian. So they're going to watch me, everything that I do. So it's a good thing. You know, I also kind of welcome that too. But um, it kind of makes me stay on my P's and Q's. And, you know, by this being my second year, it's like the more I, the more I go about my business, the more – uh, wisdom and knowledge I get, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, it's, it's just part of growing up, you know, all the great athletes that, you know, succeed in life, they've been in my shoes before, so, you know, God has blessed me with this opportunity, you know, it's, now I have to handle it as a man and be able to grow up and um, go about my business. You came from Dorsey High with uh, your teammate Jonathan Moore, how does that feel kind of coming through there like that? Oh, I was good, you know, because, uh, you know, Jonathan Franklin too, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's all right. Um, you know, Jonathan, man, you know, me and him has been through the tough times, you know, at Dorsey, you know, from where our school is and where it's located and mm -hmm. as far as the, you know, the trials and tribulations we went through. And um, by me and him going to college together, it also makes our coaching staff at Dorsey look good. You know, that was the first time two Dorsey players has been on the same team in college together. So, and also by them being close, it, it blesses them too. And it shows them that the stuff that they installed in us as far as being, 
you know, good men to us as far as teaching us the ins and outs of football and how to work hard and how to have hard work and determination. It makes them look good. And uh, by me having Jesse inside of me, it's like, you know, that's like my brother brother. You know, I love with all my heart. And um, by him playing this year, it blessed me. You know, when he, when he first scored his first touchdown against San Diego State, I got a little motion on the sideline. <laughs> you know, I didn't show it, but uh, I was happy for him. And I know what a tough um, year for what it was for him the year before by not being able to travel and not being able to play because he's been mm -hmm. playing since 95, also 96. So, you know, it, it was good to see him out there and, um, you know, big up to Jonathan. And uh, he's going to be a good player for us. Now, when you uh, talk about the, the, the teammates that you have, Mm -hmm. You have the highs and you have the lows in that same game. Another guy that you've known for a long time, guy you mentioned earlier, is bringing you to UCLA and Aaron Hester, he gets injured. So you really have to balance the, the good and the bad when you're playing, don't you? Yeah, you know, when I went back to the locker room and I said, I said, what's going on, Aaron? I was like, you all right? And he said, something was wrong with his fibula, I guess, or something. I, you know, I got a little emotional right there because I knew how, what a tough offseason it was for him. And for by me and him rooming up together last year, and I, when I used to leave, seeing him sleep, you know, I used to feel bad because I felt like, you know what, well, this guy needs to experience what I'm experiencing. I don't want to make it seem like I was better than this guy. You know, Aaron is very talented. That dude is one of the most talented players I've ever seen, you know, by him being long and big and, 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 a, and a fierce player, you know. So by seeing him go down, I was kind of bad, but I said, you know, I'm going to go out there and make a play for him. And I told him one of the picks that I made in the San Diego State, I think it was the second one, I dedicated it to him. So, you know, uh, I told him, man, get healthy, Aaron. And I said, man, just keep staying hungry. And trust me, you'll be just fine. And, you know, when he comes back, it's, it's go, I know he's going to be going crazy because that dude loves the game of football. One thing that you had mentioned to me previously was that here at UCLA, your competition doesn't end at the football field. They, they, they're really, I mean, you're competing 24-7 almost, whether it's in school, whether it's on, in football. Mm -hmm. That's one thing my, uh, you know, D. Witch tells us. Um, he said, you know, not only are you guys competing on the field, you're also competing off the field. And one thing... With football, you have to make sure you're managing both. You know, you can't just be here with football and then be down here with school. You know, you have to make sure kind of school is kind of over the football because that's what people look to see. They want to ask you, okay, you're a good football player, but how are your grades? They don't want to hear you say, I got D's and F's. They want to hear A's, B's, and C's. So, you know, that's one thing, you know, growing up, my mom stressed on me growing up. She said, son, I don't care what you do in life. You, you can't be nothing without... Uh, without grades. My mom always told me, you know, she said accomplishments are always better than possessions, you know. And, um, you know, by me coming here to UCLA, I knew what a tough task it was going to be, you know, and uh, that's why it was times where I fell short and, and uh, started getting a little lazy and I had to pick myself up, you know. So uh, you live and you learn, and it was a great experience for me. So now, going through that first year of, of school and football, I kind of know what to do. And I, mm -hmm. by me still learning from guys like Vern and Reggie, you know, I still can go through. Uh, go through some things, but I can also figure my way how to get through them. All right, well, Raheem Warren, thanks for joining us. Thanks. Thank you, Ben. Appreciate it. Anytime. Anytime. I want to thank Raheem Moore for joining us here in UCLA Bruin Talk, and thank you for joining us as well. For Stephanie Wetmore, I'm Ralph Irvin. This has been UCLA Bruin Talk, your inside look into UCLA Bruin Athletics.